What's up guys? Welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs and thank you for joining me today. Now I know I just put out a video about the one year update on the Aztec pretty much covering the entire first year of owning this thing and also recapping just about every single thing that we've done to improve upon its uh, drivability which it's obviously still not drivable right now. And I also said that, you know, we were pretty much done repairing, doing a lot of extensive repairs on this until spring, obviously because it's going to start snowing. I'm assuming it's going to start snowing sometime for the winter. Um, but, you know, temperatures and stuff, eh. Um, but that's not really going to stop me from doing little tiny things here and there. And today, we're going to try to maybe find out why it's misfiring uh, since it's been put back together. Now when I say, you know, extensive repairs, I'm talking about things like uh, finishing the brake lines. We're not going to do that until the spring. The one fuel line, we're not going to do until the spring. <clears throat> but other little things, I'll probably still do under here from time to time. Like, uh, you know, we'll, we might change out this slight leaky radiator hose here. That's no big deal. Uh, what else? There was something else. Oh, um, maybe try to mess with this transmission line one day. I'm not going to do that today, but we'll try to see if that fitting, why it's still leaking transmission fluid with a brand new line, why it's not maybe sitting in there right. I don't know. But today, uh, like I said, we're going to try to figure out why it's misfiring. And uh, last week sometime, I think I may have possibly pinpointed the area of where the misfire is coming from. Now, of course, typically when there's a misfire, the service engine light will blink, and occasionally this one does. Sometimes it just stays on, sometimes it blinks. But, uh, anyway, if it's misfiring, I'm thinking, I was thinking that it's either going to be, you know, possibly one of three things. Could be a combination, but I'm thinking it's more so along the lines of one of three things. And my guesses are it's either one of the spark plugs that I bought are bad, which I'm honestly highly doubting that the, the <laughs> um, AC Delco plugs that I bought are bad. But, I mean, hey, you never know. So it's either that, it's either maybe a bad spark plug wire, these are brand new plug wires, or it could be one of our coils in the back. Uh, I was kind of leaning toward the coils, to be honest with you. They're old. This car has 170,480 miles on it. So that, that was my original theory, is maybe the coil, one of the coils, are, you know, not good. Now, at some point in time, I might change them, uh, you know, because these are so old. But the other day, as I was saying, I was out here. I had it running for a little bit. And I decided to just start unplugging wires to try and see maybe where, the which cylinder is possibly doing the misfire. Now, I noticed uh, the... I started with the first three up here. I pulled off number six first, which is this one over here on the far right. So I pulled off six, and it ran worse. So six is working. I went to number four, unplugged it, started it up, didn't really see a change. So right now, my guess is it's number four. And I looked at the wire, and I don't like... I don't like touching these when the car is on, you know. I'm not going to unplug this again, run the car, because, yeah, I don't want to get zapped. Same with back there. I'm not pulling those off either. I don't want to get zapped. But I noticed when I pulled this one off and I had it, you know, sitting up here and it was running, you know, I, I picked it up a little bit and then it would arc and then it stopped. I'm thinking... I got a bad plug wire in that pack of spark plug wires that I bought. 
which well is, is pretty upsetting considering they're brand new wires but when I ordered the wires I didn't they didn't really tell me what they were gonna order me they just ordered me whatever cheap stuff you know the cheapest that they had so if it turns out that the wires you know this wire is bad I'm honestly just gonna get rid of these wires unfortunately and I'm gonna buy an actual set of AC Delco wires because they fit better too these these are ridiculously long they just look messy I don't like it I mean right now I'm okay with them because the car is not being driven but before the car gets driven we're going to probably end up replacing these again with some official AC Delco wires so to do this little experiment I went to the junkyard and I picked up not one but two wires they're used obviously and I'm not going to be buying a bunch of used wires, but I figure if I buy two, just in case one doesn't work or whatnot, hopefully they both work, we're going to test to see if it is in fact the spark plug wire that could be the issue with cylinder four. Um, <clears throat> I also did notice that when I put it back on and started it back up again, it ran smooth for you know a few seconds and then it bogged down again so I think that there's a chance that the wire is just bad already which like I said is a real pain and upsetting since they're brand new wires you know what I'm saying guys so we're gonna start it up um, you really don't see how bad the car is missing until it starts to kinda warm up a little bit so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna jump into it right away and uh, change the wire out right now I'm going to just let it run and get warm uh, and then when it starts bogging down you'll start seeing it shake and you'll start noticing how bad it's really running then we'll take the wire off put the new one on or the slightly used one and we'll see if it runs any different now my bet is of course the car is probably dead so I got the jumper cables out and I'm ready to jump it And there she runs. She's running really rough right now. It's been, like I said, about a week since it's been running. Let me get those off of there real quick. I mean, you can see the shake, maybe, but obviously it's shaking now. Once it starts to get a little warmer, though, and the RPM slow down, that's when you really start to see how bad it uh, shakes. And you can obviously see the exhaust, too, how it's kind of poofing. Hopefully it's just the wire. Compressor, I gotta unhook the compressor. I'm not gonna do that now. Uh, now the service engine light's on. It's not blinking, so right now it's not really detecting the misfire, or at least showing me there's a misfire. But it is, it's misfire, you can, you can feel it. And uh, yeah, so I'll turn this off, we'll give it a few minutes to warm up, and then we'll, we'll check back and we'll change the wire, see what happens. Okay, I'm going to turn the fusion off now so we can hear the uh, Aztec a little more. We'll probably have to jump it again. So now it's starting to bog down a little bit. You can see the shake. You can really see the wires shaking. Missing. Poof, poof, poof. Yeah, so we're down below a thousand RPM now, so it's starting to get warm. Thermostat, or the temperature and 
coolant system starting to rise. So yeah, she's running down to where she should be at idle speed, and that's when you can obviously see how bad it's shaking. So, we'll go ahead and shut it off now. And, okay, still have power, but I doubt the battery's gonna let me start it back up. All right, so I took a picture, obviously, because you can't really see the tops of those coils back there. So I took pictures of them on my phone and I've double checked all the wires and uh, they're all going to the right location I don't think it would be running as good as it is if they weren't in the right location to be honest with you so number four is located on the last coil pack on the right hand side and this plug here is number four So that's disconnected, and we'll disconnect it here. That exhaust is hot. <laughs> wow. Well, so in pulling the wire out, <laughs> the, uh, the actual contact piece is stuck to the plug. Interesting. I guess that wire's not going back on after all. Uh, let's see. Needle nuts. We'll try these first. As long as I don't break my plug, then I'm going to be upset. Ooh. There we go. Interesting. Ah, we'll try this one first. Obviously the thing's still in there. Okay, just want to make sure take it off again so that one clips on there push it on okay, clicked put this one up here at number four I think get to it there we go okay it's on I don't have good contact. I don't know why I can never seem to get a good connection with this vehicle. I know everything's kind of rusty and corroded. Need to clean some ground and stuff. Yeah. Maybe not. No, still shaking. So now I wonder if it's the actual coil and not the plug. Now, there might be some gas that's got to burn off in there, possibly. Darn. Well, it may 
actually have may actually be the coil now the light's flashing man so so interesting I could try the other wire see if that makes a difference okay wire number two gonna have to jump it Shake, shake, shake. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I really don't feel like buying a coil as of right now. <laughs> uh, so this is not going to be something that we're going to complete today. Well, the good news is I still have heat. It's getting warm. Yeah, so that's good. Huh. All right, we'll shut it off now. Okay guys, so it has been almost a week since uh, we were trying to see if we could figure out why it seems as though cylinder 4 in the Aztec has been misfiring. And you guys have watched the beginning of this video already. I still have a junkyard wire on here just for the time being because originally we thought it was the wire. <clears throat> kind of had a feeling that it was going to be the coil for that. So. We went to the junkyard earlier this morning and we pulled off a coil for cylinders one and four. They're in the same thing. Now the one thing I was wondering, since these coils control, you know, each or two different cylinders, I didn't know if the coil was going bad. Is there a possibility that maybe cylinder one isn't firing either? Like at least firing right? So I don't know. But either way, this was our next thing. And uh I do plan on replacing the other two uh, also in the, in the near future but right now I just want to see if this is going to solve that um, so you know my guess is st it's still four it's, I wasn't getting any spark in that wire so it's got to be it's got to be the coil I'd also like to say <laughs> I, I feel kind of bad but um, when I was at the junkyard this morning um, I actually had a hard time getting one of these off because I ended up bringing the wrong size socket. I thought that these were six millimeter bolts that these go onto, so I took a six millimeter socket with me, and that's it. I didn't load up any of my other tools or anything. So uh, turns out they're five and a half millimeters millimeter socket, and um, I ended up asking a uh, a younger gentleman and. Uh, his father, I, I believe, was his father, but, um, you know, they were coming into the yard, and I was just getting ready to leave and, you know, call it a day, but, um, you know, I, I ran into to these these two gentlemen, and I asked them if they happened to have a, either a, I asked them for a five millimeter socket, I completely forgot that there was a five and a half, but that's what it turned out to be, so the, uh, the you know, this uh, younger gentleman, uh, 
said that he recognized me and he actually asked if I had the channel on YouTube and I, I was like, you know, yeah. So um, that's honestly the first time that I've ever been recognized from any of my videos uh, at the junkyard of all places. So I thought that that was really cool. Um, you know, I'm, I've been under the weather for the last couple of days. So, um, you know, I would have probably, you know, talked a little more. I probably honestly would have asked for your name to, to, you know, shout, give you a shout out. But, um, you know, I, I just want to apologize because I haven't been feeling too well and I was really regretting, starting to regret even coming out today, but I mean, might as well finish it up. But anyway, thank you again. Um, if you're watching this, you know, I want to thank you again for lending me the, uh, the socket to take this off of the coil pack or the, uh, the Grand Am that we pulled it off of. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And uh, again, good luck with the Grand Prix that you're working on. Enjoy it. And uh, thank you again for, for watching the videos. So that's really cool. That actually made my afternoon. I was really, uh, really psyched. Uh, nobody's ever mentioned, uh, you know, videos, my, my channel to me before. So that's, that's really awesome. So thank you for being the first. Uh, I appreciate it. So now we get to play the game of removing the coil from this particular engine and of course it's in a tighter spot but it's going to be this one right here with these two plug wires on it. So I'm going to have to somehow try to make room to uh, get through here. This wiring harness is kind of hiding that screw. I might take this vacuum line off again so I can move it out of the way. And then as shown here, you know, here's the front of our particular coil, but there's that screw here and there's one on the back side. The back side is going to be fun to get to. And we pull it off the module, put this new one on the module, tighten it down, put the plug wires back on it, and then we fire it up. And we're going to see if the misfiring, hopefully, fingers crossed, is resolved. That's got to be it. If the entire module was bad, I was told that the car probably wouldn't start at all because none of these coils would be getting any kind of spark, no no power. So really doubt it's the module. Again, it's just the one coil. So let me get my five and a half millimeter socket. I'll take that off, put this one on, and we'll give it a go. I think I remembered why the five and a half millimeter socket didn't sound right to me. That's because I don't have one. I thought my set had one. It doesn't have one. So what I used, and it worked just fine, 730 seconds. So maybe that's why the uh, that didn't sound right to me. But anyway, I got both of the screws out. The coil is already kind of off of the uh, module. So now I just gotta pull it off. Try to snake it through here. <sighs> yeah. So who knows? Oh, you know what? It's cracked. Look at that. Huh. It's cracked all the way through. I wonder when that happened. Well, no doubt about it, this is probably what the issue was. Interesting. Okay. Now I feel better about this. This one. No cracks. It should work. Wish I knew what your Grand Am I pulled it off of, but whatever. So I'm going to need both hands to do this because I don't want to end up losing any of these screws. So, uh, I'll get back to you guys once we, uh, once we hook it back up. I don't know if you can see it from here, but right behind there, yeah, see those two prongs? Just gotta make sure that the bottom of these coils, right there, plug into that, that's all, that's all that is. Okay, new or slightly used coil is on. <laughs> so this is gonna be for cylinder one, that's at the very end. Pop that on there. Okay. And then my little rinky dink wire for cylinder four, which 
which I have to use for the time being. Pop that on there. Okay. All right, well, let's do the old jump, jump thing. And let's see if this thing finally is gonna run without there being a miss. Wow, I do not remember that. Holy crap. Okay, I seem to have gotten good contact first try, fingers crossed. Let it rip. This gas gauge is, you know. <laughs> All right. Maybe not. Is that it? It's hard to tell right now. Huh. I still see a little bit of vibration, but... I don't know. No, no, no. I don't know. You know, it doesn't, it sounds a little different, especially back here. It's not poofing as loud. Maybe there's another one too. Maybe another coil's bad. But like I said, I was gonna replace them all anyway. I mean, they sat for months, so I don't know. I'll let it warm up, and we'll see if there's any uh, difference. It does, as of right now, it seems slightly better, but I'm not gonna know until the RPMs dive down a little bit. But I'm sure this had something to do with why it wasn't firing from that particular cylinder. Probably should have maybe cleaned up the corrosion on those prongs too, but maybe when I replace the other ones, we'll figure it out. They could also, well, I don't know, I would think it'd be burned off by now, but I was going to say there could be some unburned gas in that cylinder. Yeah, the poofing is, is a little more quiet. It's a little more quiet than it was. So maybe we did, maybe we did fix something. I'm hearing a slight rattle. It seems to be coming and going. I hope this motor is not trashed. Yeah, there's the shaking. Still though, it doesn't seem to be as... I mean, it's still shaking pretty bad, but I, I think it did mellow out a little bit. Yeah, it's bogging down now. Oh man. Well, oh man, 
Okay. So this video is already kind of long. So what I might end up doing, because I'm going to just call it a day <laughs> with it for now. I mean, I'll let it run for a little bit. But uh, anyway, what I'm probably going to end up doing now is uh, I'm going to see if I can maybe get a code scanner. And uh, we'll just see what else it's picking up on. It's still shaking, but there's like, it doesn't seem to feel as bad as it did. So, I don't know. But either way, um, now if, if I go to replace the other coils and uh, it's still doing this, my next assumption is going to be possibly uh, some bad injectors, fuel injectors maybe. Oh, speaking of which, low fuel. And uh, then, if it's not any of that, then this, I'm just going to assume that this motor is trashed. There's obviously something going on within the motor that's causing it to misfire. And uh, I'm just going to say that it's a trashed motor. Honestly, I mean, I know I haven't driven it since I rebuilt it, but I'm surprised that it has been running as strong as it has been, uh, considering the all the the garbage that was in this in this motor. But I was really hoping I could save it. But if not, then I don't know. Anyway, we'll just work with those other two coils uh, sometime in the near future. Uh, so I guess we'll like do a part two kind of thing with this. But uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna do for today, guys. So give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video anyway. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, check out teespring.com slash store slash Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. And you can also check out um, some of that merchandise down below this video. And don't forget to check out my second YouTube channel, Just Mike 218 which focuses on um, my, my music, my music stuff. So if you like acoustic music, acoustic rock, acoustic pop, whatever check it out. Other than that, I'm going to go. I'll see you guys next time. So thanks for watching. Take care.